Hello guys, uh, very good evening to all of you and we're back with a live session after uh, the last session. It, it was a premiere, the last session. I was not there because of Dashera and a very happy belated Dashera. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, at least one day, right? You can take a, take, a, take off and enjoy it. So, how are you all guys coping up with your prep? Good evening. Hello, Vishal. Good evening. Khyati uh, Sa is asking sir मैंने आज से पहले session देखा नहीं so मैं first week से start करूँ या जो next week से start करूँ so see anyone if you have joined the session late then continue continue with me until the last and when you are done with the sessions then you can go back to first week and cover whatever is remaining तो फिलहाल मेरे साथ चलते रहिए good evening पूर्णिमा alright so Today's session, guys. Uh, today, our topic of interest is uh, antibiotics and uh, antimicrobial drugs are divided into two half. In one half is antibiotics, and next half is from October 16 to I mean 10 to 16. From tomorrow onwards, from uh, Monday to Sunday, uh, we'll be discussing the rest of antimicrobials, the non-retroviral drugs, anti-retroviral drugs. Anti fungal, anti TB leprosy, anti helminthic, anti protozoal. And obviously, we'll be doing the live session on Sunday. So, this is the timetable for next uh, one week. Uh, and I'll be posting this in Instagram, in YouTube, in Marrow Links, everywhere. But if you're not on any social media, you can take a screenshot or whatever, right? So, guys, uh, let's begin with today's session. Um, there are some clinical cases in antimicrobial drugs, some direct questions are compiled. A homeless man was brought to the emergency department who had complained recently of severe abdominal cramping, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Temperature is raised, blood pressure is low, 90 by 60. Examination patient had an erythematous indurated area. This one. With a central ulcer on the abdomen. Which of the following pair of drug would be most appropriate uh, for the emergency treatment of this patient? Right, you have read the question. As I said, it's a clinical case, right? And in clinical cases, to choose the right answer, first of all, you have to make, make the diagnosis. What is the condition? Then, if you know the diagnosis, then you can look on the options. Is it piperacillin, tazobactam plus gentamicin? Is it meropenem plus doxycycline? Is it uh, vancomycin plus gentamicin? Uh, is it penicillin G plus clindamycin? Right. What am I going to use? I'll give you some time. I'll give you some time because it's a clinical question. You'll need time to analyze it, make a diagnosis, then find the answer. Right. So what do you think would be the answer, guys? Alright, see if you are if you are having difficulty in remembering antimicrobial drugs, then as I've already said, I've already told you earlier that you have to write down DOC, write down the drug of choice separately. Right? Write down the drug of choice separately. And apart from that, remember few side effects which are important. Few side effects like the side effects of uh, minoglycoside, tetracycline, fluoroquinolones, sulfonamides, few side effects. Sometimes you'll have topics which are difficult, which are big, which are huge. But then you need not do everything. Try to limit yourself. If you're not able to do everything, suppose antimicrobial is a topic you're having difficulty, right? What, what can be done? One thing I can do is I can leave the main videos, main lectures, I can go for the revision videos. And that would be, you know, a short version of antimicrobials. So if I'm not able to cover entirely, I can do that. I mean, you, you can have that thing. All right, good evening, good evening to all of you. Nice to see you, Kiran and everyone. Right, so. Uh, see, CPR pharmacology, I don't have the PDF. I don't have the PDF. Even if I have the PDF, I'm legally not allowed to send the PDF. The publishers will kill me, right? All right, so guys, uh, first of all, 
Tell me, what is the diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? It is toxic shock syndrome. So basically, toxic shock syndrome that I can see in this patient is because of cellulitis. Right, so this patient has developed cellulitis in the abdominal area. And one of the important cause of cellulitis is an organism that lives on the skin. And that is Staphylococcus. So Staphylococcus has caused cellulitis. Cellulitis has caused TSS, toxic shock syndrome. That is why low blood pressure, right? Low blood pressure. Now, what is what is the what is the basic concept of treatment of toxic shock syndrome? Let's try to understand. Uh, first of all, I need to use an antibiotic. I need to use an antibiotic um, which is active against Staphylococcus, anti-Staphylococcal antibiotic. Now, in this case, nothing has been has been mentioned regarding resistance to Staphylococcus. Nothing has been mentioned. So usually, if there is no resistance, I can use a penicillin. If there is resistance to penicillin because of penicillin is, then I use PRP. Penicillin is resistant penicillins. If there is resistance to PRP, that is MRSA, then I use vancomycin, right? But here there is nothing mentioned about resistance. So I will not go directly for vancomycin. Anyways, I'll be using penicillin. If there is resistance, then I'll be using PRP, penicillin resistant penicillin, or I'll be using vancomycin. So anyways, depending upon the case, depending upon the case, I can use any one of these. But what is the problem here? Look at the disease. The disease, what the disease is about, it is TSS, toxic shock syndrome. So what plays an important role here is the toxin. And tell me, if I'll use, if I'll use penicillin, PRP or vancomycin, these are cidal. They will kill staphylococcus and they will release toxin. Release toxin, which means if I use, if I use only one single antibiotic targeting the bacteria, then the patient's condition might worsen because of release of toxin. So that means what? I have to give another antibiotic which inhibits uh, toxin synthesis or toxin is a protein, you know, toxin synthesis, toxin is a protein. And that antibiotic, which is good activity against staphylococcus, as well as it can block toxin synthesis, it is clindamycin. So understand how we treat, how we treat, how we treat, we treat it by combining one antibiotic that has activity against staphylococcus. It can be penicillin or PRP or vancomycin or daptomycin, whatever according to resistance you can use it plus a drug that uh, blocks toxin synthesis clindamycin now guys what is the what, what is the answer now, now i have told you the basic uh, you know concept of how i how i deal with the case of tss right now come on now tell me what is the answer so many of you have given the right answer now excellent guys so this is a clinical case this is a clinical case it was difficult it was difficult if if you are not see in my sessions if you are not able to answer all the questions it is fine. It is okay. It is okay because our aim here, it is not to satisfy our ego that I have, I have solved so many questions. No, our aim is not only to solve questions, but also to learn. If, if I'm not able to solve, it's okay. It's fine. But I'll go out of this session learning something. So you learn today that what I need to do in toxic shock syndrome. Right, guys? All right. So moving ahead, which of the following is not a side effect of sulfonamides? Right. Which of the following is not? So see, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you questions which are a mixed bag, which are a mixed bag of easier and difficult ones, right? So that you solve some easy ones, then some difficult ones, you learn something, right? So which of the following is not a side effect of sulfonamides? Is not is not a side effect of sulfonamides, rash, thrombocytopenia, hyperotoxicity, nephrotoxicity. See, I asked this MCQ on Instagram and by mistake, I kept the answer as rash uh, because I could not change it. Rash is not the answer, guys. Rash is not the answer. So what is the answer? Oh. Thrombocytopenia. So many of you have given answer as rash. 
thrombocytopenia A, B, C, D. Right. Come on, come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, guys, come on. Yeah, come on, come on. Faster, faster. You know, you know, you don't know. Commit yourself. Commit yourself to one option. You don't know, it's okay. You might get it wrong. Nothing, nothing, nothing wrong in it. Right, guys, see, whenever whenever I use uh, sulfonamides, they can cause, sulfonamides can cause hyper sensitivity. So it's, it's an easy one, it's not a difficult one. And hypersensitivity, under hypersensitivity, there is rash, plus there is bone marrow suppression. Now, I have not given you bone marrow suppression, but here I have given you a presentation of bone marrow suppression, that is thrombocytopenia. Bone marrow suppression, there can be leukopenia, anemia, thrombocytopenia. So, don't just mug up. Sirf ratta marne se nahi hoga. Right? Bone marrow suppression will mug up. But you should understand that I, I might not give, the examiner might not entertain you with just bone marrow suppression, thrombocytopenia. Right, many of you have given answer is D. Why, 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 why D is the answer? Nephrotoxicity, see, crystal urea, sulfonamides, they cause crystal urea and those crystals can get deposited in the renal tubules and they can cause nephrotoxicity. So, see, the examiner will not always give you direct options. Crystal urea, all of you will answer. But what crystal urea causes? Nephrotoxicity. You should, you should know about that. So the answer here is hepatotoxicity. Sulfonamides, sulfonamides are not hepatotoxic. Sulfonamides are not hepatotoxic. So see, so it's not that always they will give you the options that you learn in your classes. They might, they will, they will twist the options. So if there is bone marrow suppression, it will cause thrombocytopenia. I, I need to know this much, guys. Come on, right? Crystal urea means nephrotoxicity. I need to know so. So, the problem is, such questions are rank deciders, right? You cannot make these questions wrong. All right. Next is a clinical case. A drug abuser was found unconscious on the road by police. So, one thing is, he's a drug abuser. Sabdarjang Hospital, we admitted with symptoms of high-grade fever, chills, rigors, pain on micturation and back pain. Which is telling me that there is an infection, right, echocardiography showed small vegetations on tricuspid valve, right, blood culture was positive for pseudomonas with good sensitivity to most of the drugs you can see here. After surgical excision of lesions, he was started on two antibiotics for six weeks, which were, right, so you know, it's a case of, it's a case of severe infection is a case of so we are dealing with we are dealing with pseudomonas infection which is which is rather severe categorized severe now what is the answer guys what is the answer pseudomonas severe category what is the answer a b c d What is the answer? Come on, come on, come on, come on, guys. What is the answer? All right. You have to understand one thing. Whenever I talk about use of antibiotics, whenever I talk about use of antibiotics for any infection, for any infection, my first go-to drugs, the first drugs that I prefer are always beta-lactams. So I'm telling you the I'm telling you the very basic. I'm telling you the very basic of how we make regimens for antimicrobial coverage. Now, why why would I prefer beta lactams as the initial class of drug? To begin with, number one, they're least toxic. Plus, these are good sidal drugs. So less toxic drug, sidal drugs are more, more effective than static drugs. So I'll go for beta lactams, right? Now see. If there is no response to beta lactams of or if there is severe or if there is severe infection then in that case which antibiotic is added 
Tell me, comment, 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 comment. Let me know. Let me know. Comment and let me know. I, I begin the treatment with a beta lactam because less toxic cycle if the patient does not respond to beta lactam or if it is a case of severe life threatening infection. In that case, which is the drug I add? I've taught you this. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, comment, comment, comment. Let me know. Come on, comment. Let me know. Which is excellent, excellent, excellent. Kausik Das, Kunjan, everyone has given me the right answer. What is this? It is an aminoglycoside. So you know the basic concept. You know the logic. Not every protein synthesis inhibitor. The protein synthesis inhibitor of choice is an aminoglycoside. So you know how I use how I use antibiotics to make regimens. You know this or not? You know this. You have told me yourself. You have told me yourself. This is the basic concept of making a regimen. Then why are you not telling me the right answer here? Why? You know the concept. See, this is the reason why we need to practice MCQs. Because see, I always tell, having knowledge of a topic is one thing. You have the knowledge of the topic. But applying that knowledge to get the right answer is, is an MC, in an MCQ is another thing. And that's the sole reason, the most important reason why we must practice MCQs. Now tell me what is the answer. Now tell me what is the answer. I, so you, you have given me, see, you know, you know the basic concept. You have the knowledge. Now, now tell me what is the answer. Uh, what, what did I say? What am I going to combine? I'm going to combine the preferred drug is beta lactam. I'm going to combine beta lactam with an aminoglycoside. I know the basic concept, and here I have to find the combination of beta lactam and, and an aminoglycoside. See how easy it has become. And now, see, you're firing the right options as answer. So, answer is imipenem plus dobromycin. So, it's not that difficult, isn't it? So, you have the knowledge, guys. You have the knowledge. You need to learn how to apply that knowledge to get the right answer. Excellent. All of you now have given me the right answer. So, as I said, in these sessions, it's not only about getting the right answer, but also learning some new things and learning how to apply the concept, how to apply the knowledge to get the right answer, right? <laughs> All right. Not true about moxifloxacin. Moxifloxacin is a very frequently asked uh, antibiotic. There is a reason why I made an MCQ, uh, which is not true. Highest risk of seizure, seizure maximum oral bioavailability, maximum risk of tosidase, longest acting fluoroquinolone. Anubhav Sharma. See, Anubhav Sharma is asking, sir, but ceftazidim is drug of choice for pseudomonas, but why it is not the option? See, ceftazidim is a beta lactam. Penicillin G is a beta lactam. <laughs> Will you get anything extra by combining two beta lactams, no. Septazidim, imipenem, both are beta lactam. Will I get something extra? No. That is the reason why it is not the answer here. Right. So, this MCQ is an easy one. Not true about moxifloxacin, guys, which is not true. Not true. See, these are four MCQ points, the four options. This is four options in this question. Four options MCQs. And come on, come on, guys. Come on, come on. Let us comment. Let us, if, even if you don't know the answer, Make it a point. We have to commit. We have to commit to an option, right? We have to commit to an option and see if you're right or not. Now, this MCQ, this is an MCQ. It has been asked, which fluoroquinolone has maximum oral bioavailability? This has been asked. And your answer was levofloxacin, right? This is the reason why it is the answer. So, in this MCQ, we learn two things. One, maximum oral bioavailability, levofloxacin is the answer here. Moxifloxacin, we learn three points. It has maximum risk of seizure. It, has ma it causes maximum QT prolongation or maximum risk of tosidase. And it is the longest acting fluoroquinolone. All these three points are important MCQs. It is the longest acting fluoroquinolone in, in use currently. Right? The banned one like sparfloxacin is longer acting, but it is banned. It is not used nowadays. Right, so it's an easy one, right? And I'm proud of all of you. Most of you have given the answer and the right answer, right? A 60-year-old diabetic patient was forcefully brought to the hospital with fever and a throbbing, throbbing pain in the foot. There was a putrid smelling ulcer in his foot full of pus. A gram stain of pus showed multiple gram positive and negative cocci and rods. Which of the following antibiotics should be started while culture sensitivity report is awaited? Right. It's not an easy one. It's a difficult question. 
is not an easy one it's a difficult question but i have taught you this i have taught you this and whatever i have taught you whatever i have taught you, you have to apply that knowledge so see it is a putrid smelling ulcer on his foot right and this tells us that mostly i might be dealing with anaerobic infection multiple gram positive and negative cocci and rods are there so multiple gram positive cocci and rods positive and negative effective which drug will be the answer a b c or d now see here yeah. come on all right let's come in let's come in first of all let's commit to an option my commitment is it to a b c or d Now see you guys, your, your answer is clindamycin. Your answer is clindamycin because if you remember, I told you it is a drug with activity against gram positive and gram negatives. Gram positive aerobes, anaerobes and gram negative anaerobes. It, it, it does not have activity against gram negative aerobes. It does not have activity against gram-negative aerobes. So it covers almost every gram-positive aerobes and anaerobes and gram-negative anaerobes. So it is a drug with quite a wide spectrum. Wide spectrum. So it covers Staphylococcus, Streptococcus. Uh, it covers Nocardia. Um, it, it also covers gas gangrene. So most of the gram-positive aerobes and anaerobes are they are covered. And gram-negative anaerobes like uh, your Prevotella, uh, bacteroids, everything is covered. But metro, metro is not the answer here because metro has a limited activity against mostly gram negative anaerobes. Gram negative anaerobes. Metro has not, no activity against gram positive. So, broad spectrum, clindamycin. Clindamycin is the better answer here. Now, this, if you remember, if you remember this spectrum, if you remember this spectrum is something which I have, I have taught you in your lectures, right? And that is what we have applied here. Motilin receptor stimulation by erythromycin resulsin. See, macrolides and motilin receptor associated MCQs are commonly asked. Right. Uh, diarrhea, gastritis, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, both A and C. Come on, guys. Come in, come in, come in. What is the answer? Motilin receptor stimulation by erythromycin resulsin. Diarrhea, gastritis, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, both A and C. What do you think is the answer? What do you think is the answer? Right. There was a trap. There was a trap and most of you fall for the trap. Diarrhea obviously is seen because of motile receptor but diarrhea is not the answer gastritis is not the answer now see diarrhea and hypertrophic pyloric stenosis both can be seen that is the reason why both cannot be the answer here i mean individually so both a and c are correct see motilin receptor stimulation leads to contraction of the git and that extra peristalsis or contraction is responsible responsible obviously for diarrhea but it is also responsible for hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. So option D is the right answer. Option D is the right answer. Now see, whoever, whoever has marked option A as the right answer, don't, don't get upset. A might be the wrong answer, but it is not the stupid answer. It is not a stupid answer, right? You have, you have marked it based upon your logic. So don't blame yourself. So what you learn today here? What you learn today here is that motilin receptor stimulation causes two things diarrhea as well as hypertrophic pyloric stenosis all right now coming to another clinical case a 10 year old boy was brought to the hospital with fever and joint pain in his knees and wrists who had throat pain for last 10 days he had red hot and painful knees and non prorotic rash without distinct dislike body or borders on his thigh and uh, stomach. There were painless sarcoidinous nodules. Heart auscultation revealed a mitral valve regurgitation murmur. 
elevated ESR and NTO titer, streptolysin O, a diagnosis was made and a suitable therapy was prescribed. Which of the following pair of drug would be most appropriate for initial treatment of this patient? See, in this case, the diagnosis is pretty simple. The diagnosis is pretty simple. So, what is the diagnosis here? What do you think is the diagnosis here? Come on, guys, comment. What is the answer? Rheumatic heart disease is excellent. Right. Rheumatic heart disease, RS3. So, once I make a diagnosis, so see, whenever, whenever you get clinical cases, your first aim is to make a diagnosis. Otherwise, make a diagnosis, then look at the options. Don't look at the options before making a diagnosis. If you look at the option, you'll get confused. Now, see, if it is a rheumatic heart disease, then obviously, uh, for which is caused by streptococcus, which is caused by streptococcus, and the preferred drug for streptococcus is penicillin G. Penicillin G. But see, the patient has developed uh, arthritis as well as inflammatory symptoms. And to penicillin G, to penicillin G, I have to combine an NSAID. And you know, acetaminophen, it is analgesic and antipyretic, but it has poor anti-inflammatory effects, so it is out. So option A is the right answer. Penicillin G and aspirin. Excellent, guys. Most of you have given the right answer. I'm proud of all of you. Most of you have given the right answer. Option A is the right answer. So it's an easy one. It's not a difficult one. Now, this is an MCQ which is asked in a different way. In a different way, you have to identify, identify the antibiotic looking upon its spectrum. An IV drug abuser presented with fever, persistent cough, dyspnea to the emergency. He has been suffering from HIV and is on drugs on, on and off, but currently not taking any antiretroviral drugs. He was diagnosed with uh, pneumonia and was successfully treated with gentamicin. Which of the following bacteria might have caused this disease? Is it bacteroid, Centrobacter, Chlamydia, Clostridium? Come on. Which, so basically, basically, aminoglycoside, I mean, gentamicin is an aminoglycoside. This is your clue. Gentamicin is an aminoglycoside and from this you have to find your answer. Is it A, B, C or D? Guys, I have told you this. Minoglycosides, minoglycosides, they need oxygen. They need oxygen to enter into gram negatives. That is the reason why they are not active against anaerobes. This is an MCQ that has been asked many times. So, minoglycosides, they are not active against anaerobes. Right? Okay, now at least now can you tell me the right answer? Is it A, B, C or D? Is it A, B, C or D? All right. I have I have removed I have removed bacteroids. I have removed Clostridium because both are anaerobes. Both are anaerobes. Now, now I'm left with Enterobacter and I'm left with Chlamydia. Chlamydia. Are minoglycosides active against Chlamydia? Are minoglycosides active against chlamydia? Against chlamydia, what do I use usually? Chlamydia two are used. I use either macrolides or I use tetracyclines. Depending upon if it is STD causing chlamydia, I go for tetra or I go for macrolides. Right. So what is the answer? See, chlamydia minoglycosides are not active. So your answer is Enterobacter, guys. Your answer is Enterobacter. See, I've told you this, the spectrum of aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides. Spectrum is, it is active against all the organisms where ceftriaxone is effective. Only exception, except typhoid. So whatever uses you have, plus ceftriaxone uses, plus pseudomonas, plus enterobacter these are 
the uses these are the uses so better answer is option b b is the better answer enterobacter a and d a and d you should be able to rule out based upon a simple concept anaerobes minoglycosides they don't have any business remaining with chlamydia enterobacter many of you went for the option c as an answer is okay is fine whenever i'm left with two options i will go for the answer no matter what i have to go for the answer i have to take my chances i might get some options wrong and that's okay it's okay it's fine right it's not the end of the world a uh, newborn term baby born to a febrile mother presented with respiratory distress a few hours after the delivery physical examination and lab results suggested neonatal sepsis and an empirical antibiotic therapy was started later blood cultures indicated listeria infection as the causative organism which of the following drugs would be most appropriate to administer in combination with ampicillin for treatment of his infection right so listeria see usually what i what i use in listeria listeria meningitis i use ampicillin isn't it i told you the concept in the beginning that my first go to drug if effective my first go to drug if effective is always a beta lactam is always a beta lactam but if it is a severe infection like meningitis i do combine what i do combine what i do combine an aminoglycoside now see because you now you know the trick all of you have given the right answer and i'm proud of all of you gentamicin is the right answer excellent guys excellent all of you gentamicin is the right answer right so excellent excellent most of you have given the right answer yes vestibular toxicity is seen with streptomycin gentamicin minocycline all of the above what is the answer guys vestibular toxicity is seen with streptomycin gentamicin minocycline all of the above come on come on come on guys come in all the all of see this this does not come under even moderate it's an easy it's an easy mcq it's an easy one and if you if you if you will not solve such questions correct then you're out of the race guys it's an easy one right no at least six, 70% of people will do this question right so what is the answer see we know that vestibular toxicity can be seen with streptomycin we know that it can be seen with minocycline streptomycin causes a maximum it does not mean gentamicin does not cause all aminoglycosides will cause vestibular toxicity but it is maximum with streptomycin right gentamicin can also cause vestibular toxicity only tetracycline which causes vestibular toxicity minocycline so answer is all of the above right so never underestimate the power of all of the above so all of the above is most of the times uh is the right answer now this was a saying this was a saying to hamare time pe all of the above questions kafi aate the aajkal aapke samay mein bahut kam aate hain aur hamare samay mein ek kahawat thi ki jahan dekha all of the above wahan dimag nahi lagane ka so whenever you see all of the above we we didn't used to you know even think all of the above go for it but anyways what you need to learn is vestibular toxicity can be seen with can be seen with all aminoglycosides only one tetracycline that is minocycline right maximum with streptomycin so anyways guys all of you have given the right answer now a patient presented to the opd with fever and productive cough with thick green sputum patient is suffering from severe bronchial asthma is on high doses of prednisolone so the last thing that we go for on examination he has coarse breath sound in the right lower lung and a chest x ray showed a nodule with central cavitation examination of the sputum showed long branching filaments so this is where you'll get the answer acid fast rods so basically is an mcq where you need to use little bit of micro as well which of the following drugs would be appropriate to treatment the patient's infection so it's an easy it's not a difficult one if you know micro if you know micro it's not a difficult one so one is micro another clue is he's on he's on high dose of prednisolone means what immunosuppression so in this patient immunity is 
suppressed immunity is decreased and even if i don't know micro and if i look at immunity suppress, suppressed then it is what guys both are hinting towards pneumocystis pneumonia so pneumocystis you know it is more common in hiv patients and again that's because of immunosuppression right so now the answer is pretty pretty easy go try moxazole right excellent guys most of you are correct 86 year old woman complained of burning on urination and bladder pain urine culture shows growth of gram negative rod and kidney function test shows raised serum creatinine levels she is also a patient of bronchial asthma and is on prednisolone for same and is on vitamin D supplement for treatment of deficiency. She was started on ciprofloxacin and after, after 5 days of therapy she developed tendinitis. All of the following could have increased the risk of tendinitis in the patient except. Right. Now see ciprofloxacin causing tendinitis or tendon rupture is a frequently asked MCQ. In your last uh, NEET PG they had asked you tendon rupture, chloroquinolone. So I've made a new MCQ. I've made a new MCQ related to tendinitis or tendon rupture, which can be asked. Old age, vitamin D deficiency, steroid use, renal insufficiency. Even if you don't know the answer is okay. But do comment. What do you think could be the possible answer? And even if you get it wrong, anyways, it's okay. You will learn something. You'll learn something from here, from this MCQ. Old age, vitamin D deficiency, steroid use, renal insufficiency. Come on, guys, come on, come in, come in, come in, come in, come on. What is the answer here? All right. Nobody, nobody is going for B as the answer here. B is the answer. Vitamin D. See, vitamin D has to do with the bones, not with the, uh, you know, tendons. Vitamin D has no role in the tendons per se. It has role in bones. Now, because tendon is joined to the bones, that is the reason why you got confused and that is the reason I've given this option. See, tendinitis risk is more or the risk of tendon rupture is more in case the patient is elderly, in case there is steroid use, in case there is renal insufficiency plus in patients of organ transplant. Patients of organ transplant. In patients of organ transplant. Right, so vitamin C, vitamin D deficiency has nothing to do here, right? Now I get, you go for option B as an answer and I told you why. Even if I was a student, I would have gone for vitamin, uh, I mean, I would, not, I would not have gone for vitamin D deficiency as an answer here. Right, so how renal insufficiency? Renal insufficiency, ciprofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone and its excretion is renal. Renal. Excretion is renal. So obviously, if there is renal insufficiency, there is uh, an extra systemic exposure to ciprofloxacin or fluoroquinolone that increases risk of toxicity. Right. Anyway, so guys, here B is the right answer. It's okay. If you get it, if you get it wrong, it's okay. No problem. But if they ask further in tendinitis, agar tendinitis ya tendon rupture pe aage aapko sawal aata hai. If they ask further, what they can ask you is this, four points, risk of tendinitis, old age, steroid use, renal insufficiency, and organ transplant. This, this is what you need to remember, right? So steroid use, it is associated with tendinitis. Long-term steroid use can cause tendinitis and tendon rupture. We don't know. It is just uh, an observation that has been seen, right? As compared to linezolid, tedizolid is short acting, more effective, more toxic, orally bioavailable. As compared to linezolid, tedizolid is Barasha is is always uh, good to see you guys as well to interact with you guys. <laughs> see this question sometimes you know sometimes we don't get the right answer because we lack in the english language what is the meaning of this question a question kya pooch raha aapse ki linezolid ke mukable tedizolid kaisa alag hai as compared to linezolid 
how Teddy solid is different. And you are giving me option D as the answer. It is not. The reason being, both, both are oral. Both are oral. So D will not be the answer. <laughs> you are getting my point. I mean, I'm not, Teddy solid can be given by oral route. But as compared to linear solid, it is not that is, you know, different. Both are given by oral route. Right, so D is not the answer. D is not the answer. So what is the answer? Excellent. Most of you have given the right answer, guys. More effective. See, Teddy solid, it has slightly more efficacy against phylococcus because you know, linear solid, Teddy solid, they are active against gram positive organisms. Short acting, no. Teddy solid, see, linear solid is given BD dosing, Teddy solid is OD dosing. So it is not short acting, it is long acting. More toxic, no. It is less toxic. Toxicity, like bone marrow suppression, is lesser with uh, Teddy solid. So B is the right answer. B is the right answer, guys. A patient is suffering from ulcerative colitis was admitted to the hospital with fever and severe abdominal pain. The patient had diffuse abdominal tenderness and bloody diarrhea. He was diagnosed with fulminant colitis and an emergency therapy was started. Which of the following antibiotics would be most appropriate in this patient? Vancomycin, clindamycin, metronidazole, fidaxomycin. Come on guys, this is an easy one. Come on, come on, come on. What is the answer? Is it A, B, C or D? Is it A, B, C or D? What is the answer guys? Come on. What is the answer? A, B, C or D? Dego, ye, ye jo question hai, ye bohat bada jal hai. Or jis jal mein, zyada tar log phans chuke hai. <laughs> Is jal mein, आप लोग फंस चुके हैं सीडो मेम्ब्रेनस एंटरोकोलाइटिस नहीं है ये ये नहीं है इट इज नॉट अ केस ऑफ सीडो मेम्ब्रेनस एंटरोकोलाइटिस डू यू रियलाइज दैट इट इज अ फल्मिनेंट कोलाइटिस राइट एंड दैट इज सीन बिकॉज़ ऑफ अल्सरेटिव कोलाइटिस इज नॉट बिकॉज़ ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक यूज इट इज नॉट बिकॉज़ ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक यूज इट इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ अल्सरेटिव कोलाइटिस exposing the intestinal mucosa to the organisms present in the colon which are gram negative anaerobes like bacteroids they have caused fulminant colitis so i'm asking treatment of this when i made this mcq i was pretty sure most of you will go for either a or d but a and d are not the answer jal mein phas gaya Answer kya hai? Now tell me what is the answer. Now tell me what is the answer guys. Now tell me what is the answer. At least now tell me what is the answer. At least now tell me what is the answer. Come on, come on, come on. Comment. What is the answer? B or C. See, clindamycin is usually preferred for supra-diaphragmatic. Metro is preferred for infra-diaphragmatic anaerobes. Where is colon? Above the diaphragm or below the diaphragm? You know that. So what is the answer? It is not clinda. Answer is metro nidazol. Now, I want to make one point here. Whenever you solve MCQ, many a times you look at the stem of the MCQ, you come across a word like colitis and you jump on your seat. Oh, hurrah, I get the answer. It's pseudomembranous enterocolitis and vancomycin or is the answer. Don't become over enthusiastic while looking at the question. Try to analyze it. Look at the question. Right? Don't feel overjoyed and settle down, then find the answer. Right? तो अपने उत्तेजना को जो है ना बस में करना सीखो डोंट गेट ओवर एक्साइटेड सो कैन सी इट वाज अ वेरी सिंपल एमसीक्यू राइट बट बट जस्ट बिकॉज़ यू आर नॉट फोकस यू विल गेट द आंसर रॉन्ग अ पेशेंट डेवलप्ड रिकरेंस ऑफ सीडो मेम्ब्रेनस एंटरोकोलाइटिस आफ्टर 3 मंथ्स ऑफ लास्ट एपिसोड द मैनेजमेंट शुड बी ओरल फिडेक्सोमाइसिन ओरल वेंकोमाइसिन ओरल फिडेक्सोमाइसिन प्लस बेजलोटॉक्सोमैब ओरल फिडेक्सोमाइसिन प्लस ओरल वेंकोमाइसिन uh shubham chaudhary podcast i will start i'll start podcast but once once we are done with weekly pharma we'll cover we'll, we'll end weekly pharma in november after that i'll start podcast as well oh my god 
all of you have given the right answer. I mean, most of you have given the right answer. 99 percent, almost. And I'm so proud of all of you guys. So option C is the right answer. Oral fidaxomycin plus bezlotoxumab. You won't imagine how, how happy I am that I've given this answer right. And I've taught you this, that whenever there is a case of pseudomembranous enterocolitis, the treatment depends upon, see, whenever we are dealing with pseudomembranous enterocolitis, treatment depends upon if it is non It depends if you're dealing with non-fulminant or or a fulminant case. Non-fulminant. If it is first episode, then we use oral fidaxomycin. If it is second, if it is second episode or it is recurrence. If it is after more than six months, treatment is same less than six months then we use oral pedexomycin plus bezlotoxumab fulminant oral vancomycin plus iv metronidazole so at least at least this much you should remember at least this much you should remember and you have given the answer right right i've given the answer right and i'm really proud of all of you so guys c is the right answer excellent a 14-year-old young football player in the junior team was admitted to the hospital because of fever and severe pain in her left leg. A bone scan showed inflammation of her left distal femur. Blood culture sensitively showed growth of Staphylococcus resistant to cloxacillin and vancomycin. He was started on a drug that acts by inhibiting protein synthesis by acting upon 30S subunit of ribosome. Which of the following drug was most likely given? So resistance to vancomycin, Staphylococcus, it means I'm dealing with what? Which infection? I'm dealing with VRSA. What I've asked here is in VRSA, which drug from the options that is used inhibits protein synthesis by acting upon 30 years of ribosome? Is it tetracycline, linozolate, tegacycline, deptomycin? What is the answer? What is the answer? Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. What is the answer? A, B, C, or D? Kya hai? Answer kya hai? By linezolid. Linezolid wale jitna bhi log linezolid answer kar rahe hai. Aapne ye socha ki linezolid koon se subunit pe kaam karta hai? Linezolid it acts upon 50 s subunit. Bhool gaye? Linezolid acts upon 50 s subunit. Tetracycline, they go. Tetracycline has no effect in VRSA. Deptomycin can be used, but it, it does not act upon protein synthesis. I'm left with what? Tegacycline. Tegis, deptomycin is not the answer. By question, padho dhyan se. What is the question asking? A drug used in VRSA, but it acts by inhibiting protein synthesis on 30S subunit of ribosome. 30S subunit of ribosome. Tetracycline is not the answer because tetracycline acts upon 30S, but it is not it is not active against VRSC. TG cycline, which is a sibling of tetracycline. Right. So here, see, TG cycline is the right answer. Dekho, it's a multi-layered MCQ. It will test your knowledge right, about the drugs. So TG cycline is the right answer. TG cycline is the right answer. It's not a difficult MCQ, though. It's difficult. Nahi hai. ये बस आपका दिमाग का पेशेंस चेक करेगा। ओके, okay, so I've discussed some important things today in this session, and as I've said, the most important part of our sessions is to make you guys aware about uh, you know the session. The aim of session is to discuss something new. But the most important thing is what you guys do from Monday to Saturday. So if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Otherwise, we can call it a day and retire. Papua, next episode, Aiga. Jaldi Aiga. The Shera Me Gargayata Me. See, I don't have PDF of these sessions, guys. I don't have PDF of this session. See, the thing is that PDF is not required. So, I have told you already. I have told you already. Uh, 
earlier that these live sessions are just to keep you motivated to go forward so that we can chat, we can talk, and uh, you can ask your doubts. Kuch main pochunga, but the most important part is from Monday to Saturday. Ye, this is most important. And now tell me, are you are you are you studying, then revising, then re-revising for 15 minutes and 5 minutes? Are you doing this or not? By jo maine shuru mein kaha tha ki pehle din padna ek ya do ghante ke liye, uske baad 15 minute tak revise karna usko agle din, uske agle din next day re-revise for 15 minutes. Are, are you doing this or not? Are you doing this or not? Because this is see, this is the most important part. This is the most important part. If you are doing this, if you are doing this, your retention, आपका जो retention है बहुत 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 अच्छे से बढ़ जाएगा. End में जब pharma खत्म होगा, तो आपको ऐसा नहीं लगेगा कि मैंने pharma पढ़ा था कि नहीं पढ़ा था, right? देखो re revision करना जरूरी है. पांच मिनट. ऐसा लगता है हमें. भाई पांच मिनट में क्या उखाड़ लेंगे? ऐसा नहीं होता दोस्तों. आप पांच मिनट में री रिवाइज इसलिए कर पा रहे हो बिकॉज आपने दो बार पढ़ रखा है इससे पहले राइट पढ़ रखा है मोनजिमा शर्मा इज आस्किंग सर व्हाई लिनेजोलिड इज मोर कॉमनली यूज बिकॉज लिनेजोलिड इज मोर वाइडली अवेलेबल टेडिसोलिड लिनेजोलिड के बाद आया है एंड यू नो वेन द न्यूर ड्रग कम्स इट इज मोर प्राइसी महंगा ज्यादा होता है अवेलेबिलिटी कम होता है पांच मिनट नहीं हो पा रहा पांच मिनट में करना है देखो पांच मिनट में मैंने क्या बोला है पूरा नहीं पढ़ना ओवरलुक करना है तो जो पॉइंट्स एमसीक्यू दो पॉइंट्स जो मार्क एस क्यू जस्ट ओवरलुक पांच मिनट चलो ठीक है पांच में नहीं होता दस मिनट लग जाएगा भाई पांच मिनट में नहीं हुआ तो इसका मतलब थोड़ी न्यूक्लियर बॉम्ब डाल देगा कोई इफ इज नॉट पॉसिबल फाइव मिनट टेक सेवन मिनट टेक टेन मिनट इज ओके थैंक यू सुरभि कानोजा और सो This is our next uh, session. Uh, see, if you are a second year students, uh, see twentieth notebook बनानी चाहिए बिल्कुल बनानी चाहिए twentieth notebook uh, अगर आप नहीं बना रहे तो pharma में I'm I'm gonna release soon something which I'll tell you, right? Uh, Varnit Agarwal correct. Dear drug of choice for VRS is pneumonia is linezolid, but VRS is daptomycin. Muhammad Yasir, I don't have a Telegram group. I don't have a Telegram group because I tend to get lost. You can find me on Instagram. And Instagram, I do post every day seven eight questions. And my Insta handle is Doc Farmaniac. Right. So, up Instagram me, up Instagram me, uh, you can ask me. You can, you can message kar sakte hai. I reply to all the messages. Sare message ko me reply karta. राइट right. और क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करेंगे तो स्टोरीज में जो इंस्टाग्राम स्टोरीज होती है उसमें क्विज होता है एवरी डे आई डू ऑर्गेनाइज अ क्विज एंड देर आई आस्क यू नो सो क्विज में जो क्वेश्चन होता है ना जैसे कि देखो नॉन रेट्रोवायरल ड्रग है नॉन रेट्रोवायरल ड्रग है तो मंडे को आप नॉन रेट्रोवायरल ड्रग पढ़ेंगे तो मंडे को ही रात को छः सात बजे मंडे सिक्स टू सेवन ओ क्लॉक आई पोस्ट क्वेश्चन ऑन टोमोर ऑन इंस्टाग्राम आई पोस्ट क्वेश्चन ऑन नॉन रेट्रोवायरल ड्रग्स ताकि दिन में आपने पढ़ा शाम को आपने सात आठ कुछ नए क्वेश्चंस, आई पोस्ट न्यू क्वेश्चंस, राइट विच विच इज नॉट बीन आस्ट अर्लियर राइट सी कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर फोन नंबर से आई आई कैन नॉट रिप्लाई एवरी वन ऑन फोन नंबर यू नो इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल कॉलेरा रोग ऑफ चॉइस कॉलेरा रोग ऑफ चॉइस इज डॉक्सीसाइक्लिन प्रेगनेंसी इज एजिथ्रोमाइसिन Uh, I'm coming. Yes, guys, I'm coming. I'm coming to Hyderabad on 31st. 31st, there is one-day revision class in Hyderabad. In Hyderabad, I have a one-day revision class in Hyderabad, and for that, I'm currently making a workbook. Currently making a workbook, and the entire pharma, entire pharma, I'm targeting to get revised in 50 pages. 50 pages. I'm trying to make a workbook in such a way that in 50 pages, the entire theory. will be able to revise uh, and as of now i'm doing it only in hyderabad but i'm planning um, on uh, november end or december and jan towards the end of the exam i'm planning it in delhi delhi mumbai nagpur chennai and probably Cal uh, 
कैलकटा एज वेल किरण सांगले दी एन्सर ऑन इंस्टाग्राम क्वेश्चन आर इन माय स्टोरीज यू गो टू माय स्टोरीज यू विल फाइंड फाइंड द एन्सर बर्थ ब्लॉग्स सो बिश्केक दिस इयर आई डोंट नो आई एम नॉट श्योर आई थिंक आई आई माइट नॉट बी कमिंग टू बिश्केक आई डोंट नो एज ऑफ नाउ सी ऑनलाइन आई कैनॉट डू आई कैनॉट डू ऑनलाइन आई कैनॉट ऑर्गेनाइज ऑनलाइन रिविजन क्लासेस एटसेट्रा बिकॉज देर इज अ लिमिटेशन मीन्स ऑफलाइन आई कैन डू एनी थिंग बट ऑनलाइन वॉट एवर आई डू आई हैव टू डू इट यू नो ओनली इन मैरो एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म बट दीज थिंग्स आई कैन डू ऑनलाइन द रिविजन सेशन एंड दीज आई कैन डू बट आई कैनॉट डू अ फुल्ली प्लेजर्ड सेशन राइट इफ इफ आई वॉज अलाउड आई कूड हैव आई कूड हैव डन दैट I am not allowed. Prasanna Kumar, I am not allowed to do that. Uh, Doctor S Square. See for NEET PG. If you are preparing for NEET PG, you can miss calculation based MCQs. Don't worry. Go for calculation based MCQ if you are serious about INI set. That is where they are mostly asked. For NEET PG, don't bother yourself. Just remember some basic formula, and you'll be done. uh why is it it is not possible guys i cannot go to each and every place indore ahmedabad uh, see ahmedabad or indore also is not possible i i i can organize only in few cities right uh sirf workbook le sakte hai see you don't need to take the workbook uh, rohan raj because i'll i'll be releasing i'll releasing something for revision very soon i'll be releasing something i'll be announcing it very soon so i'll be announcing in the next uh, you know next or next to next session as well so like guys that's all for today's session it's almost 11 o'clock so let's call it a day and thanks a lot for coming in today's session participating guys bit by bit day by day ah uh, uh, we'll try to gradually cover a pharma nicely and so that we retain it completing a subject is not important remember just completing a subject is not important how much you retain after that is important and weekly pharma that is what is precisely our aim is to do during these preparation time see now you are about to enter into the zone of prep where the pressure would be enormous when you are, when you are supposed to wrap up the course and begin revision every day you will question yourself or every few days am i going to make it will i be able to cross that line and believe me that anxiety that that questioning yourself is a good thing the reason being you are not taking yourself for granted and because of that you will strive hard every day to be a better version of yourself remember you might not be getting good marks in your grand test as of now but that will improve that will improve with revision that will improve with revision and you will be a different human being after your first revision note it note it down guys so don't curse yourself don't count yourself out as of now there is still a long way to go till march and if you are wise enough if you are you know honest enough with your preparation you can make the mark take it from me so good night guys take care bye bye lots of love from myself